Hi, I'm Adrian Cockcroft. Over the years, I've given a lot of talks on microservices and cloud architectures. And there are some ideas I always wanted to illustrate with a short animated sequence. So I've worked with a visual design team to come up with a series of animations, each illustrating a specific concept. Today, I'm going to talk about mapping your stack. This is a very useful way to figure out what your current technology stack is and how you might want to evolve it. So technology evolves, and our tech stack choices need to be discussed, justified, and decided. So I'm going to start with a few helpful questions. First question, what problem are you trying to solve? And if your answer to this is something about building or installing a framework, that's really the wrong answer. You should be talking about how you're solving a user or a business need. Are you trying to get faster feature delivery, an international launch, lower cost, or improved quality of service? The next question, what's the user need? A good friend of mine, Liam Maxwell, who was the CTO at, uh, for the UK government for a while, he actually put it on the back of his cell phone so that he could hold it up in meetings and keep getting back to what really is the user need? What are you optimizing for? So if you start off with the user need, then there's a value chain behind that need. And you can ask questions like, what's your time to value for that value chain? How is the value chain evolving? And finally, there's a, a, a good question, which is, have you heard of Simon Wardley? Because he has a, a whole presentation, a whole uh, collection of material about how to map these value chains. This is what a Wardley map looks like. This is a fairly generic one. And this talks about how things evolve and how the value chain is mapped out. At the top, you have things that are visible, where customers are, are touching your system. At the bottom, it gets more and more invisible, more t layers of technology. Going from left to right, you have Genesis, which are brand new things that have never existed before, then custom-built things, then product and rental. This is things like uh, off-the-shelf, common off-the-shelf software or open source projects. And finally, on the right, you have commodity and utility, things like uh, web services and a lot of AWS services end up here on the right. The point of this particular map is to say in the past you used to have something that was completely custom built and over time it has moved through to being a commodity. You then take that commodity and build new things on top of it which are uncertain, changing, chaotic and a differential source of future worth. You build those out, you innovate on them and then you take those things through and commoditize them. So there's layers and layers of technology building up. And one of the things you can ask customers or ask yourself, what's your Wardley map? What's your position and movement on the map? Because the key thing about a map, it shows where you are and also how you're trying to move. And there's quite a lot of different ways you can use these maps. I'm going to come up with a specific example that's quite simple, uh, but I hopefully still quite useful. I'm going to talk about travel search. So here's the problem we're trying to solve. Customers and end users want faster, more personalized search for their travel. The business that's operating this wants faster feature releases and lower costs. So here's the user need. What they need is a search interface, say a mobile application. That talks to some kind of travel data store. And behind that is a whole load of compute and storage that supports it. You can draw these maps yourself, uh, but you can also create them using a website called wardleymaps.com. And I typed a few things in and used that. So these are screenshots from the wardleymaps.com site. Here's the starting point. And I'm going to start off using Simon himself. Simon, I, if you follow him on Twitter, you see him occasionally grumbling about how uncomfortable aircraft are. And if he flies coach, the seats are uncomfortable. So that's, this is his starting thing. He's trying to find a, 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 a flight and he's using a flight option, and there's a mobile search app that talks to Nginx, that talks to the travel service, then there's a search cache, those are running in a travel search data center, but the actual data that the travel search service uses comes from a global distribution system. You might have heard of Sabre and Amadeus, those are examples of that, and that runs in a data center itself. Now, Simon, as I said, likes to be comfortable, so here's a new user need, something that hasn't been done before, he wants to find comfy uh, options. He wants to find a nicer seat. So he wants to find aircraft that are particularly comfortable to fly in because they have nicer seats than old planes. So maybe you want to find um, an Airbus 380 or a Boeing 787 Dreamliner because those are more comfortable than uh, an ancient you know, uh, 
plane from 20 years ago that's still flying. So he wants this news option, so you modify your mobile app to create that option. And then the problem is that the, you now need a lot more data, so this whole system is now getting a bit more slow, it's getting more costly to run for the operators because you're providing much more personalized options requiring a lot more data. So Simon's happy, but he said the app's a bit slow, and, but the people operating this service aren't happy because it's costing more. So here's the next uh, thing we're going to do with the map. We're going to show movement on the map, which was going to take these three sections of the service and we're going to migrate them over to utilities. So we're taking Nginx, we're going to rewrite that using API Gateway. We're going to take the travel search service, re rewrite that using AWS Lambda, and the search cache and move that to Elastic Hash Redis. So that's, that's the motion we're going to do. We could discuss that with our colleagues and decide that's what we wanted to do. But once we've done that, the nice thing is that we no longer have a dependency on the data center, which means that this search application is no longer data center based, it's now completely cloud based. So here's the new version of the serverless uh, evolution of this stack. And we still have the travel search function, which is custom built, but everything else is now commodity or as a service. So that made it cheaper to run, but it's still a little slow. So let's look at optimizing the next level. We can take the global distribution service, which is currently running in a data center somewhere, which is quite a long way away from the AWS service region where we're running the new search application. However, this GDS service is actually portable enough that it can be relocated to run in multiple data centers or cloud providers. So what we can do is relocate that to run in the same region as the, uh, as the rest of the AWS service. So we're going to make that change, run it within the same region. Now the, um, the search application is actually con connected to this other service uh, by internal networks within a region which are incredibly high bandwidth and extremely low latency. So this gives you a very fast front end and a very fast ability to get into the data, the global distribution system and search it. So that's, that's a pretty simple way to map a fairly straightforward example into uh, a new set of technologies meeting a bunch of different customer and business needs. Hopefully, uh, if, if Simon had forgot to use this, he'd be a little bit happier. Although he'd be even happier if, uh, if his employer would buy him a business class ticket occasionally. So that's the basic thing, a nice way to be frugal. I think the interesting thing here is you can use this technology, to, this, this technique to map, discuss, and plan the evolution of your technology stack. I, I advise you to follow Simon Wardley on Twitter, trackwardleymaps.com. He has a, a Medium blog which uh, has lots of detailed examples and an entire story. He's in the process of writing a book by blogging it one chapter at a time. There's a few more chapters still to come before you can actually buy the book. Uh, well, hopefully you found that interesting, and uh, that's it for this month. Thanks very much.